Hello everyone and welcome to Roadmap. So today's topic is water resources part 2 and if you like the video don't forget to click on thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe for more video updates and you can also give your suggestions in the comment section below. Topics to be covered are introduction, water scarcity and need for water conservation and management, multipurpose river projects and integrated water resource management, in water harvest. Now, coming to the multipurpose river projects and integrated water resource management. Now, how we do how do we conserve and manage water? This must be a question coming to your mind. So, archaeological and historical records show that from ancient times we have been constructing sophisticated hydraulic structures like dams, reservoirs or lakes, embankments and canals for irrigation. Not surprisingly, we have continued this tradition in modern India by building dams in most of our river basins. So coming to the hydraulic structures in ancient India, in the 1st century BC, Srinagarapura uh, near Allahabad had sophisticated water harvesting system channeling, channeling the flood water of river Gamba. Now, during the time of Chandragupta Maurya, dams, lakes and irrigation systems were extensively built. Now, evidences of sophisticated irrigation works have also been found in Kalinga, Odisha, Nagarjuna, Konda, Andhra Pradesh, Bennur, Karnataka, Kolhapur and Maharashtra. In the 11th century, Bhopal Lake, one of the largest artificial lake of its time, was also built. And in the 14th century, the tank in House Khas, Delhi was constructed by Ilthmush for supplying water to Siri Fort area. Now, what are the dams and how do they help us in conserving and managing water? Dams were traditionally built to impound rivers and rainwater that could be used later to irrigate agriculture fields. Today, dams are not built just for irrigation but for also electricity generation, water supply for domestic and industrial uses, flood control, recreation, inland navigation and fish breeding. Dams are now referred to as multipurpose projects where the many uses of the impounded water are integrated with one another. For example, in Satlas Bihar's river basin, the Bhakran Angal project water is being used both for hydel power production and also for uh, irrigation. The Hirakud project in the Mahanadi basin integrates conservation of water with flood control. So a dam is a barrier across flowing water that obstructs, directs or retards the flow, often creating a reservoir, lake or impoundment. So dam now, uh, the dams mostly are referred to the res uh, mostly have a section which is called a spillway or weir over which or through which it is intended that water will flow either intermittently or continuously. Now, dams are classified according to the structure, intended purpose, or height. Based on the structure and the materials used, dams are classified as timber bar dams, embankment dams or masonry dams with several subtypes. Now according to the height, dams can be categorized as large dams and major dams or alternatively as low dams, medium height dams and high dams. So basically impoundment is the result of a dam creating a body of water, a reservoir which is formed by a dam. Coal slurry impoundment, a specialized form of such reservoir is used for coal mining and processing. So the multi-purpose project which are launched after independence with their integrated water resource management approach were thought of as a vehicle that would lead to the nation to development and progress. Overcoming the handicap of its colonial past, Jawaharlal Nehru proudly proclaimed the dams as the temples of modern India. So the reason being that it would integrate development of agriculture and the village economy with rapid industrialization and growth of the urban economy. In recent years, we have seen that multipurpose projects have large dams which are coming to the great scrutiny.
so there are some reasons for multi purpose projects and dams which have come under great scrutiny which is regulating and damming of rivers affect their natural flow causing poor sediment flow and excessive sedimentation at the bottom of the reservoir resulting in the rockier stream beds and also poorer habitats for the rivers aquatic life dams fragment rivers making it difficult for aquatic fauna to migrate so especially which is uh, for spawning the reservoirs that are created on the flood plains also submerge the existing vegetation and soil leading to its decomposition over a period of time so the multi multipurpose projects and large dams have also caused of many new social movements like the narmada bachao andolan and the tehri dam dam andolan so the resistance to these projects have primarily been due to the large scale displacement of local communities local people often have to give up their land livelihood and their access and control over resources for the greater good of the nation so if the local people are not benefiting from such projects then who is benefited this is the question uh, which should be given a thought so the land owners and la- land a large farmers industrialists and few urban centers take the case of landless in a village does he really gain from such a project so uh, what exactly is narmada uh, bachao andolan it is nar- uh, it is also called as save narmada movement which is a non ngo that is a non government organization so it is an ngo so it is non government organization that mobilized tribal people farmers environmentalist and human rights activist against the sardar sarovar dam being built across the narmada river in gujarat it originally focused on the environmental issues which are related to trees that would be submerged under the dam water recently it has refocused the aim to enable poor citizens especially the outsiders which is displaced people to get full rehabilitation facilities from the government so people felt that their suffering would not be in vain accepted the trauma of displacement believing in the promise of irrigated fields and plentiful harvest so often the sur- uh, survivors of rehan told us uh, told that they accepted their sufferings as sacrifice for the sake of their nation but now after 30 bitter years of being adrift uh, their livelihood having even being more pre- uh, precarious they keep asking are we the only one chosen to make sacrifices for nation so this is about the narmada bachao andolan and in the coming videos we'll learn about the irrigation and how it has changed the cropping pattern of many regions with farmers shifting the cult, uh, agriculture to water intensive and commercial crops so i hope you are enjoying the video stay tuned for more lessons to come and if you have any doubts feel free to ask in the comment section below it takes a lot of effort to make this video so i would be glad if you give your suggestions in the comment section below or you give your feedback whether you like the video or you don't like the uh, you dislike the video so thank you for watching